So one more thing that I want to do uh, is that I want a so let's just bring output. Um, and I, I already kind of like, by the way, the timing that I have here. So necessarily, we don't necessarily need to do this. But my original scene, I retimed this. Um, so what we can do is if we put a time blend. So if you first put a time blend and then later a time shift, and if we then turn off integer frames, so if we turn off integer frames, we can actually go in between frames when we drag. And if we do that, if we don't do that, I mean, it it still works in here, but it won't uh, move forward. By in, well, let me just show you. So let's say we go to frame whatever ten. So we don't integer frames. Let's see, let's see if I slowly move it forward. I like very small increments. You don't see anything moving in the viewport, right? If I turn off, if I turn off integer frames, oh, and I need to tell this timeline, by the way, to interpolate rotations, rotations, and don't have IDs. We need so this is uh, so this needs to be PT num because we don't have IDs. Okay, um, time blend allows a another node, for example, a dot node or a read time node, to start manipulating it on a subframe level. And generally, if you do, for example, a particle simulation, then all your points have IDs. Um, IDs are unique IDs for every point. So if a particle dies, and then um, and then another one is born. The new one will never get the same ID as the as the as the old one that died. So you can always be sure that 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 you have unique uh, numbers for your point. And if you want to retime, then you need those IDs. But so this is set up by default to use ID. But rigid our rigid bodies don't have IDs. In this case, we could we could make IDs for them. But uh, but in this case, we don't have a changing point count like. The points here stay the same if you middle mouse, 601 points, 601 points. So in this case, we can just tell it to use the PT num, sort of point number. So that's the number over here to use the ID. Because if it was set to ID, it doesn't understand it because there's no ID. So if there, so that's why if I then go over here, that if I go to subframes, that like it doesn't. Like it all moves them to the center because it doesn't know what to reference. Let me put PT num, then it does now. Uh, okay, anyway, so let's put it to 10. And now I can actually like animate subframes. You can see them slowly move. So that's perfect. So then what we can do is we just can put this to, let's say, zero. And what we could do is we could sort of uh, animate this ourselves. So let's have a look at what this looks like. So this explodes upwards. So what we could say if we wanted to is let's say, okay, what I want, I want the first part to happen faster. And then and then just do this part slower, so then you would get right like that. And then you put you can put these pieces here. So then you have control over that whole part. So then we could also say that like, oh, this part after the initial blast, this is probably so this part is probably too fast. So let's put it to twelve. And then the part afterwards is still way too fast. So I could like shift click on our uh, channel. So if you shift click on this, you open the channel editor. Probably want to move this outward a little bit. Let's change this. And probably we want our last frame to not be 110, but maybe 160, just so I can just prove a point. 
So now as you can see it will first be super fast and then it will, be, it will slow down to make it even more extreme if we were to put this to like 25. Let's back. And then super slow all of a sudden. And the curve is inverting, so it's kind of reverting there. But yeah, something like that. So anyway, I, I don't really, uh, I kind of like the way it was looking already. So I'm just going to turn these off for now, just so you know that that's how that works. And that's what I also used in the original scene to just read time stuff. Because I was already happy, quite happy with how my rigid body sim look. And uh, when I just, I just wanted to change some timings. Um, so that's what I just tried, just changed it like that. That's how you work a lot in Houdini anyway. Like if, you, if you're generally happy with something and you don't want to re-sim because you're generally happy with the way the sim looks, uh, then you might do some final tweaks in SOPs after the simulation. Because if you change some small parameters uh, in a simulation, then the entire thing might, might end up looking way different. And if the director uh, really likes the simulation, but he just has some minor tweaks like Oh yeah, it's like some pieces need to like move a little bit different or whatever. Just animate those by hand. Like keep the entire sim. Like just push them, push some stuff in in position by hand. Um, so anyway, I'm I'm really rambling on right now. But so yeah, so that's essentially our rigid bodies. So yeah, now we have now whenever we have those, I guess we can put this thing into a render node. And then later we're also gonna extract some velocity from these pieces and then put those in pyro. So we're gonna we're gonna do our, our, uh, our pyro after this, but let's first just make a render node already for this thing. So let's copy copy this node. Let's go out of this thing. Let's, let's uh, turn off landscape and let's make a geometry. Call this R and R uh, explode uh, rock explode something like that. Let's object merge that in. There we go. And then we also have our landscape here. Maybe instead of now uh, we can do this as an outer. Uh, let's not use an output by the way. Let's do no, just a no. Call this out. RBD. And we need to merge this in again over here. And then we need to do another out because remember, uh, we also need one to for when we're gonna render our terrain. So let's put one over here and that will be our terrain. Out terrain. Just merge that. And let's make a, let's copy and paste this thing. r and r terrain. Uh, r terrain. Probably need to copy this uh, node again. Landscape. Copy our terrain nodes, r and r terrain. Paste it in there. And let's hide these. And let's move these two in our R and R is already in our render nodes thing. Let's make it green. Perfect. Well, almost perfect. Why is my terrain not showing? Oh, I didn't merge it properly. All right. So let's uh, let's make a flipbook from this. See how it looks. Let's go from frame one to uh, ninety something.